What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent patron saints, Thar Dorwin, Colt Seaman, Julius Urado Jr., Tho Her, O.M. Gino, Great on Booth, and Ethan Bergeron. Thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link below in the description to find out more. Thanks again. We did Star Wars Connect. I didn't expect this many people to come back with this. We were going to get to this eventually. But I figured, hey, why not start now? I mean... We hear your voices. They are plentiful and they are... Not just the ones in our heads. They are actually yeah. not audible because they're mostly in text. <laughs> <laughs> we can, no matter uh, you know how bold we we or put how them into Microsoft. We can put them in like, into Microsoft Mic and just be like... Please re it's like please react to our video. Mm, please react to John Tron Starkane. I would very much appreciate it. Please react to our shit, please. Ron. Please react to John Tron Starkane. Becky, please <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> bitch. That's still funny. Well, we both went there. So yeah, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. John Tron Starcade. We are now arriving at this. There will be ones of these where we do multiples in one episode, but hey. Somebody was like, watch them all in one go. Ain't nobody got, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. We no, have other stuff we got to do, you. man. No, thank you. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to start here at the beginning. John Tron's Starcade Episode 1 Atari games. So, the Atari. The thing that single-hand, that it, along with um, E.T., caused the great video game crash of the 1980s. Didn't crash hard enough. It, it actually had a <clears throat> play in keeping me very involved in video games, though, because basically with my video game progression, at three years old, my cousin Josh, for some reason, decided he didn't want his NES anymore. I think maybe he got a Super Nintendo or something. Maybe. And so he told me I could have it. And my mom was like, yeah, that's cool. Like, we'll take it then. And well, so we brought it home and I played NES games and I had like a decent collection of them, but I had played all of them either to the point of getting totally stuck with no internet to figure out how to get any further, you know, obviously at the time. Plus I was three, so I wasn't that great at it. Or, you know, I'd played through like the first three levels of Mario like 18 times and just, you know, <laughs> kind of got tired of trying to get better at it and so my mom was like, you know, Leslie has another video game system in her closet in her room. And I was like, what? And I was like, uh, what Atari. is it? And uh, she's like, yeah, I'll have to get it out sometime. And it was an Atari. <clears throat> and uh, my yeah. mom got it out and it had several really cool games on it. It had Pitfall. I remember um, that one. It had uh, like these weird little like games that were very cool as a kid, but probably wouldn't be as fun now. Like Word Blaster, stuff like that. But it, it, it had Pac-Man. And, um, luckily it didn't have E.T., so I didn't get exposed to that. <laughs> well... Didn't have to be scarred for life as a child. So. Okay, I actually know someone who does own a copy of E.T., Damn. and I've asked him multiple times, can we blow it up? <laughs> um, I, I, okay, so what happened that started the great video game crash of the 1980s was an overabundance of video game properties being loaned out to Atari. They had ridiculous... Dude, they had... Uh, they had, I think it was a, a Ghostbusters video game. They had... Dude, they had a Journey video game. By Journey, I mean the band Journey. Where you literally had to be a roadie and get their shit to the, to the, uh, to the van <laughs> and avoid, like, scalpers and shit along the way. I'm like... Looking back now, and I'm just like, that's stupid. You're stupid. This deserved to crash. And it did. And it pretty much caused a lot of people to realize, okay, we can't just start keep throwing shit at the wall because eventually it's going to pile up and, you know, clog up the exhaust. So what are we going to do? Well, you got you have to experiment a lot to figure out exactly what people are going well, to <clears throat> but react then, to. But then Nintendo came so. in with their brand new premium 8-bit system that pretty much Revolutionary was, graphics. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't revolutionary, but it worked, and it was fun, and it was safe for pretty much anyone to play, and it was, it was Super Mario Brothers, and lo and behold, we have 
the Japanese quote unquote invasion of the video gaming market. Something I wonder is how many people realize there's a, a Mario game on Atari. Oh, it's I know. There's just plenty nothing other. like Super Mario Brothers. No, I know. It's completely different. Yeah, and it's done. That's the I think the first official like home console release one. I know that there's a Donkey Kong version on the Atari, which is shit. But most of the games that were on the Atari were just like quick ports over and stuff like that. Had no game development. They were just reskins. All and they like did was just uh, arcade stuff. Yeah, all they did was just modify sprites to be uh, you know to look like Donkey Kong or something like that, and the gameplay was not the same. But, yeah. The whole thing with the Atari, I mean, we could sit here and talk all day about it, but instead, let's hear what JonTron has to say about Star Wars games that were on the Atari. I got a feeling that he's not going to have some nice things to say. He's probably not going to have the best time playing these. No. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> <laughs> shut up back there! Chewie, get us out of here! I said shut up! You're just pissed off because I outsmarted you and got you flying saucer. And, and maybe next time you'll think for a second before you pick up someone saying they need to get to the nearest hospital as fast as they can. You chumps. Alright, now just to take this thing for a spin past Earth and give everyone a little sci-fi scare. Maybe I'll end up on the next episode of Ancient Aliens. God! It's... Star Wars? Oh, come on! This thing's good for nothing! Whatever, let's get out of here already. Oh, whoa, 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 no, no, that's... Incoming message for Captain Solo from Supreme Commander Vader. Oh, jeez. Oh, just a tight squeeze here. This call is brought to you by Empire Collect. Would you like to accept or die? I accept. Yeah, accept. Accept. Thank you, and please enjoy surviving another day, Rebel Scum. Well met, Commander Tron. Well, that's not my real name, but you don't look like that kind of guy who cares. I must commend you for your valiant efforts against the Rebellion. The Empire is most impressed. You managed to capture two of the most infamous of rebel scum in the galaxy. You mean these two guys? The, 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 the shaggy looking guy in the walking carpet? No, no, I just picked them up because they have no paper <coughs> trail. Say no more. Now it is your time to truly prove your worth to the Empire. Now you listen here. I will never, as long as I live, join the Empire. Also, who is that? And you, you're just my dad trying to scare me again, dressing up because of the teach me lesson. <laughs> what? Because I, I don't mean to wake up, mom. Very well. Let's see if this persuades you. <gasps> That's not my throat. You're really sure? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I John! I certain will pique your interest. John, John save me, me and your bird friend, Buck Dark. What? How'd you get Chuck? I have my ways. Now, to show I mean business. No! Oh, no! He's just a boy! Oh, no! Oh! That was only a taste of what's to come unless you comply to my demands. Alright, fine! I'll do it! What, what do you want me to do? You are to play every Star Wars video game for me. Even the poopy ones. Not the poopy ones! <laughs> for my upcoming Let's Play channel. I plan on calling it Darth underscore Vader underscore like Screen Day 1992. Seriously? That's what you're gonna call it? <laughs> You'd be better off calling it something stupid like Starcade. Ah. many Star Wars games spanning so many decades. Where does one uh -huh. even begin? Especially when he doesn't even have any of them. Yo, Vader, if you want me to do this, you gotta give me the games. Of course. A slight oversight. Oh, I see Jedi Knight in there. Ow! What the 
yourself? So, seriously? <laughs> Come on, man! Don't you have a better way to do this given your empire budget? This is a good one. Oh. That's good. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks, Vader. <laughs> this game is a port of the 1983 arcade game of the same name that used the now outdated vector style of graphics, which we'll get to later. And wow, look at this box. If you were a kid in 1983, chances are you would have thought this was pretty cool. Yeah, You're probably like this guy right here. Whoa! Time fighters fireballs coming right out here. Watch the laser towers. Aim for the tops. I remember this arcade game. Oh, God, I'm gonna die! Stop going in! <laughs> Holy crap! By the way he lived. Terrifying commercial. Like a goddamn psychopath. Right? <laughs> With an advertisement like that, you know you're getting into something good. Let's go to the moon, baby, or space. Wait. Which way be, is this going? Be gentle with it, it's ancient technology. Now, I don't want to be overly critical, but I can't help but feel there may have been a slight exaggeration made in that commercial. Some game! Alright, man, come on, we get it, calm down. Maybe the sequel will fare better. They also made Empire Strikes Back on Atari, but weirdly enough, this one came out before the first one. I don't get it either. Man, that's nice. You get the real music in the game. Not all tie-ins gave you that back in the day, so believe it or not, that's actually a bonus. I'm not so sure what's going on on the bottom of the screen, though. Is that a horizontal radar of someone constantly firing a bullet? And uh, speaking of understanding, I don't really understand where I am in space or time. Is that the mountains, or are we under sea? If those are mountains, what would that make these? Subterranean mountains? Atari games are hilarious. They just merely hint at what is actually supposed to be going on. You could have called this game Bird vs. Camel, and no one would have argued with you. Don't believe me? Look, you'd have bought this, wouldn't you? Shhh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fox art. To complete the trilogy, there's Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle. It's a good thing they went with the Death Star and not some Ewoks. Yeah, that would have been weird. Ah, yes. I remember this classic Star Wars situation. Now we know why Han Solo was late to help Luke in the Death Star battle. He first had to cut a hole through a large David Bowie's album art before he could get there. <laughs> you fly around as the adorable Millennium Falcon like you're playing Asteroids, and you're supposed to That's exactly guess, go what through I'm this saying. tear to get to the Death Star so you can destroy it. Hmm, I don't remember the Death Star sounding so much like my dad's office. Who left the fax machine on again? Wow, they made this look harder in the movies. In this version, they uh, decided to make the Death Star out of styrofoam. Can we play that back in reverse? I think I might have heard the voice of Satan in there. This game is coarse and rough, not like <laughs> you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I guess we're just gonna pretend nothing happened then. Business as usual. This game just keeps looping forever once you beat the Death Star. There's no level two. Good God, it's like a Star Wars Groundhog Day in here. Yes. Oh God. Moving on. How about this one? Star Wars Jedi Arena, where Luke doesn't look like he gives a shit at all. <laughs> Okay, what's been going on in here? Hey, all right, maybe if we could just, you know, slow down. Stop, 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 please! Okay, that's enough! Come on, stop! Okay, let's just move on to the last game we have here today, which is Return of the Jedi Ewok Adventure. But I don't have it here to show to you. In fact, few, if any, do. It was intended to be the twin sister game of Return of the Jedi Death Star Battle, but it was never released, even though it was fully completed. Yeah, that's a good sign. It disappeared without a trace for 14 years until being found by a collector in 1997. For fear of a lawsuit, it was never released to the public. But lucky for us, in 2001, a prototype copy was finally secured. Although, only one of these is known to exist. Damn. What could have caused them to cancel a perfectly good game? Let's find out. Console, please recreate Ewok Adventure. And make it snappy. Recreating is the. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of ship you're flying in this game, but I already like it better than the other games. It seems to be some kind of speeder that flies close to the ground. It has weight and it's really cool as far as the Atari goes. Ew! Look at the ATSTs! Oh my god! We're gonna have nightmares now. Let's give you an artist's rendition of what the HD version would look like. <laughs> oh god! 
That looks like a D&D &D monster of some kind. Yeah, the hell that's not how I feel. That was trippy as hell. Do I still have my brain uh, intact after that? Ooh. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh no! Ah, crashed my shit. Uh-huh. What an adventure. All right. An Ewok adventure. What? You, you, you're just gonna get right back in another ship and take off? Also, where, where are you getting? Who does that belong to? That is not your ship. Believe it or not, I think this is actually the best game out of them all, and it's the only one they didn't release. Maybe they wanted it all to themselves. Who could blame them? Oh boy, and that's only a tiny fraction of what we got to cover. So stick around and tune in next time to find to find out the mystery of who it was who uh, allegedly let those dogs out after all. <laughs> it's me. I'm trying to sleep. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Not gonna lie, some of these games, I, 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 I'm glad the Atari died before I was even born. But it, do you not realize he was just playing like theatric? Who let the dogs out? Music yes. at the end of that. <laughs> yes, I did. What the? F because. This guy's a maniac. I love yes, him. he is. John is a freaking crazy man. Yes, this is pure genius. Like, maybe, maybe we'll find out one day who who really did let those dogs out. It was me. All right, I was trying to sleep. Yep. So funny. I'm ex actually kind of excited about the series though because if he's going to do every Star Wars game there is, uh, there are actually a couple of Star Wars games that I had a lot of fun with back in the day. Yeah. That I'm oh, really yeah. excited to see. Like, I I really want to see him do like um, Jedi Academy and sh shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Jedi Academy is the one that I probably played the most because I actually that was one of the only times I ever really got into modding games myself, like making mm -hmm. mods for games. Yeah, like I made a bunch of stuff for Jedi Academy, like maps and shit. And, nice. Uh, I was supposed to be on a project to actually map for a really large Jedi like Academy project that was going to be like essentially like a uh, galactic conquest type mode in. Jedi Academy, but it never got off the ground really before. Damn. But like I, I had submitted like, you know, a map as like, you know, you know, what I could do with the tools and stuff and everything. And they were like, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and like come make levels for us for this. And I was like, All right, yeah. and we never really got started on it. Yeah, it, it sucks that was a cool it doesn't game. work out the way you want it to. I mean Yes it does. Yeah. Cause for me, my okay. Probably my favorite Star Wars games I ever played were the ones that were on the Super Nintendo. They were great. They were. For me, Very it was difficult. the 64, man. Very difficult. Yeah, 64. But, uh, but I will say Rogue this Squadron. on 64. Shadow of the Empire. Well, Shadow, Shadow of the Empire, Empire yeah. dude. Shadow there the Empire was some parts of it that were really good. Yeah. But it still was lacking in a lot of ways. Not when I was like 10. No, yeah, no. Same. When I was a kid, that yeah. was the shit. Mm. But there, but here recently, I, you know, the, the, the sheer downturn in quality that we've had from the the battlefront games i played the first battlefront it was fun enough they want to be call of duty really bad they do really and that's bad. the problem if you want to do call of duty then do that shit in battlefield this is star wars this is something that has a lot deeper of a fan base than a bunch of nine-year-old kids screaming into their Xbox 360 headsets. And loot boxes. And, and loot boxes yeah. and shit like that. I just wish it could get back to, like, everyone's on an equal playing field, you're as good as you are at the game, and that that's what makes you good at it. That's why No we, extra anything. Everyone has access to everything. That's why we play Overwatch. Yeah. Because Overwatch has only cosmetics. Yeah. Only. So, and thing is, you can... That's great. If you play through the game enough, you pretty much unlock literally everything. Mm. But what, I mean, like, that would take eons, but... No, no. What so actual... Was at, like, level 600? I don't know. There's so much stuff in that game. Like, plus, they put new heroes out with, like, 58 things to unlock and keep putting new stuff out for them to unlock, like, oh, every yeah. once in a while. And oh, updates, yeah, but so. still, though, I mean... I, I'd, you'd have to play basically nothing but Overwatch to unlock everything. Pretty much that's all he does. Yeah. So... But, is there realistic games like you know more realistic games like um like call of duty or whatever that are the way that they were in like call of duty 3 apparently that's what they're trying to build with the new modern warfare game so they don't exist now on a major 
In terms of a major scale? Major scale? No. Okay. No. Just Because the one that was closest to it was World War II, and even then it was guilty Still of... Still stuff you needed to do to upgrade <clears throat> your character and Epic. stuff. Which is cool. Yeah. Heroic! I, I'm not against modification. Like, you guys were talking about cosmetic or even mm. certain skill sets based on how you want to, to play, but everyone needs access to everything oh, other tools. than just looks yeah. or whatever, sure. Mm-hmm. But, like, to bare bones play the games, everybody should be on the same level. That's how you know you're better than somebody, and it's not just some thing you've unlocked that they haven't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. whenever I got, uh, whenever I, I rented Battlefront 2, yeah. um, I went into the game and opened my, like, initial loot boxes and stuff that they give you, and that mm-hmm. was all I was going to go in with, you know. I went in at level one, basically, and I had, like, a regular, like, level one grenade and stuff. One of the first things that fucking happened to me was this giant fucking explosion went off and killed me and, like, six guys around me, and I look in the kill log, and it's, like, max level grenade. I'm like, yeah, the motherfucker that spent all his fucking money to be good at the game. Like, yeah. that that's fun. It's like, I'm that's so fun. talented. Thanks for buying the $250,000 version of the game for me, Mom. Right. I'm so talented. No, you're not. No, you're not. It and- just makes it not fun to play the game. And, like, if we wanted to play a game where all we did was compete with people that were mega rich that we couldn't compete with, we could just walk out the door. Well... <laughs> Truth is, you know, that's why, that's why for me, I actually talked to a kid the other day who said that he hated, like, games with, like, deeply immersive single-player experiences because, to him, the game's just, it's like, the game just ends. I'm like, yeah, and your exactly. point being? <laughs> and he's just like, but I don't get it. I mean, it's like I was playing Spider-Man, and after it was all over and done with, the, the game just ended. And I'm like... It's a story. This isn't this isn't Bastion Bucks and the never ending story where you can just bullshit as you go. These are people telling a story that begins and ends. That's how this works. It's not something that is malleable like for instance, okay. In that game, in the star in the in the Spider Man game, the campaign is a very long campaign. Very long and a very satisfying campaign. Has a lot of story elements to it. And there's no multiplayer shit. And there's no loot box shit. And I asked him why he didn't like playing through it like that. He's just like, man, I just, I, yeah, it, there just should be a mode in there where you can play forever. And I'm like, there is. You literally can just keep swinging around the city and doing whatever. You can replay challenges, see if you can get a better time, like a more ridiculous time, like compete on leaderboards and stuff like that. He's like, but it's just not the same. And I'm like, how? And he couldn't give me a straight answer. He could it's not. It's just a different game. That's I feel how, really bad know? for people that can't enjoy a story well, in a game. Well, and, and like your life must be fucking boring just doing the same shit well, over and, and over and every that's day. That's what we're getting back to with. I want Far Cry, Far Cry 5 story to have never ended too, but also going back and getting everything and 100% completing that game is something that when I get time to do it, I hop on and try. Dude, like, well, yeah. any time a story goes on for a really, really long time, as long as it's good, I'm cool with it. But at the same time, like, I am super ready by the time I get to the end of that game to go check out something else because there's so much out there. There yeah. is. There's, like, so there much is. on offer I to mean, experience. I mean, can't go full Gerard the Completionist on all the games nah, that we play I, 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 I don't have the time. I don't try that at all anymore. Like, nah. there's certain games... Every once in a while that I'm like, you know, this seems worth 100%ing because it doesn't seem like there's too much to 100%. And I'm totally down. Like, I did that with Spyro, the Spyro collection. I was like, fuck it. These games weren't that huge back in the day for being games where you could collect a bunch of stuff. So I went ahead and did it. And me, the the proper thing for me was uh, whenever I did the, um, whenever I did, uh, I 100%ed both God of War and Spider-Man PS4. I 100%ed both of those God of War is going to be one of those games I get to the end of it and I'm like... I've heard about the Valkyries. They're notorious, so I'm going to kill them, and then I'm done. Yeah. Like, I thought that, too. But uh, there's going to be too much then, in that game for me to want to 100% I thought that, too, but it. then I looked on my trophy list, and I only had six more to go, and I'm like, let's do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm more. I'm going to be more like, dude, that was awesome, but I'll play the next one when it comes out. Like, it I took just, me six years to play. I don't play have time. There's too much stuff i got to play. And be done with it. Like, done with everything, pretty much. I can dude, do I tried yeah. really hard, actually. Yeah. Like, that was the last huge game I tried really hard to 100%, yeah. and 
Um, besides maybe I think the first Dark Souls, which I gave up on very fucking quickly because fuck that frustration. <laughs> um, no, like not just frustration. It's just like some of the trophies in Dark Souls take a fuck ton of work. Just like not not play and fun, but work. Like it's yeah. like a chore to get some of no, those. No, I, I get that hundred percent. Um, but uh, yeah, Skyrim. I really tried very very hard, and I was like maybe one or two away and yeah. i think that was when my playstation 3 died yeah and, uh, so I, I like one of the ones i didn't get was like earning the amount of gold you have to get for that trophy because oh yeah that one was a one lot either. of money because <laughs> i wasn't trying to do i was doing it on the xbox 360 so you couldn't really do anything mod wise yeah um and i actually did cheat because i did the whole when you had the book and you could put it on the shelf and max all your shit up yeah. on that profile before they patched it. Uh, I did that one, but it took me six years to get to, I mean, I was damn near done with every single fucking thing. Um, I well, just got exhausted. Whenever I was doing mm. this one, it was when uh, Andrew was playing it as well. And it was like our second time playing it. Mm. And uh, we were just actually going, and I would I would go to his house, take my PlayStation Three with me, and we would just sit in his room, and on two separate TVs, we'd just be playing Skyrim and talking about it. I mean, like, you done this yet? You know what you getting into? You know, and just yeah. kind of playing the game together separately, if that yeah. makes any sense. And, uh, and so we were both trying to go for the platinum, and I think he got it, but I never did actually get it. Well, yeah. you see, the one thing about about we we actually talked with this about Micah, uh, to this Micah, um, when Elder Scrolls Six rolls out. We told Micah, let's build you a PC that can run that shit. And we got time. We got nothing but time to build shit, to build mm -hmm. that shit. I mean, hell, we can make the same offer to you. Yeah. We can build I, you a PC that can handle that monster. You might as well say goodbye to me as a human being <laughs> if that happens. Well, honestly, dude, if you want to stream it all the time and just be like, just like, do that. I'll be like Ric Flair was with his gimmick as a wrestler. I'll just Woo! become whoever I am in the game. Yeah. Do not open my door. <laughs> Seal it. Good. Brick me in. Good. <laughs> you could be. You could make Stormcloak Steve Awesome again. Yes, yeah, Stormcloak Steve Awesome. But anyways, I think we've gotten way off track. With yeah, this. we have. And we got some other stuff to get to. Yeah, we do. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for tuning in. If y'all want to see more from John Tron. There's a link in the description down below. Take you to the original video. Check out John Tron's channel. This guy. Check out more Starcade episodes. There's nine more. There's nine of these. So feel free to do that. And I guess until next time, everybody. Signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Nick. I'm Chad. We will see you all in the next one. Peace.